The military court martial in consequence of and conforming to articles 205 and 206 of the Military Code of Justice declares Captain Benoit guilty of the crime of treason and condemns him to the penalty of military degradation and life imprisonment at Devil's Island. Captain Benoit, you're unworthy to carry arms. In the name of the people of France and by virtue of the authority vested in us, we deprive you of all military privileges and rank. Keep it to yourself, hadn't you? Keep it clean. I'm a traitor. Would I be your friend if I believed you to be a traitor to France? I'm sorry. You're the one person who's always believed in me. I'm not the only one, you know. Your wife is waiting to see you now. I won't see her. Why, but... I won't see her, I tell you, that's final. I suppose even a man bound for Devil's Island has that much control over his private affairs. Aren't you going to speak to me, Jacques? I told Cambon I didn't want to see you. Jacques, look at me. While there was hope, I told you I was innocent. But now there's nothing to be gained by lying. The court was right. I'm guilty. Now, will you please go? You're such a baby, my dear. Did you think I wouldn't see through your silly little plot? Margaret. You thought, because they sentenced you, you tried to make it easier for me to forget. Yes, and that's what you've got to do. Margaret, you don't understand. I'm finished. In two weeks, I'll be shipped with all the other cattle like me from Marseille to Devil's Island for life. For life. Don't you understand? There's only one thing I understand, my dearest. Your life belongs to me. Margaret. You know that I'd do anything for Jacques, but I'm defeated. I can't think of any avenue that we haven't explored thoroughly. You've investigated everybody. There's one person you haven't properly considered. Who do you mean? Dr. Theodore Van Wyck. Van Wyck? Margaret, have you gone out of your mind? No, I'm merely using it. But you've never even seen Van Wyck. And you can't know anything about him or you'd realize that he couldn't in any way be connected with espionage. When everything else has been eliminated, what's left must be the truth. But how could Van Wyck possibly be a spy? He's a millionaire. His one interest is art. He's known everywhere, in every capital city. If only you'd go over the whole thing in your mind, you'd see my theory isn't so impossible. Margaret, you should get rid of this idea. It isn't going to help Jacques. Now listen. When Jacques was carrying that document back from Athens, didn't he meet Van Wyck on the train? Yes, but... Uh... Wait. When the journey was broken at Constantinople, didn't Jacques and Van Wyck go to the same hotel? Yes. And wasn't it at that hotel the document was stolen? Yes. 
Margaret, suppose there were some basis in fact for your theory. Do you realize we have nothing to show the authorities? I don't want to show anything to the authorities. I don't want any more to do with them. I'm going to do this myself, but I do want your help in the beginning. My help? Yes. Now, on Friday, Van Wyck will be in Marseille. He's boarding the Columbia for New York. Why, I didn't know he was in France. He, he isn't yet. He's on his way from Rome to catch the boat. What do you want me to do? Get you a letter of introduction to him? No. My strongest card is that I've never met the man. I want you to get me a passport to America under the name of Marguerite Rivera, who will be a fellow passenger of Dr. Van Wyck. There she is now. Who? The woman I told you about. But who is she? The person said her name is Madame Rivera. She's traveling alone. Oh, I do beg your pardon. I'm really terribly sorry. You know, it's a, it's a terrible habit I have of rushing about not looking where I'm going. Uh, something ought to be done about it, don't you think so, really? Do it. I yes, do hope I didn't hurt you. Would you get me a chair? Yes, Madam. Uh, this way, please. Thank you. May I suggest one of these, Madame? No, thanks. I've already chosen a place. Very well, Madam. I want one right here, please. Yes, Madam. Van Wyck? I'm his secretary. I have a message from the captain for Dr. Van Wyck. A message for me? Yes, sir. The captain's compliments, and he would be honored if you would sit at his table throughout the voyage. My compliments to Captain Roscoe. I'll be delighted to accept his invitation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Where shall I hide this, or shall I wrap it up and leave it with a person? Neither. Just leave it in the portfolio with the others. Portfolio is more difficult to hide. Well, don't hide it. Just leave it lying about. Put it on the settee over there. With a document in it? Yes, of course. But anybody might find it. Well, think what you're doing. Why, that's worth half a million. Did what? you ever hear of Edgar Allan Poe? Are you crazy? No. He was the first man to expound the theory that if you want to hide something, you should leave it lying in full view. Yes, it all may be very well. I'm known all over the world as a patron of art. Now suppose, although of course it's absurd, but suppose someone aboard were to suspect that I'm something else. Exactly, and as soon as they start searching, they'll find it. Not unless I hid it. There's nothing suspicious about it. It's just a picture. Yes, but don't you think that we might... That's enough. Good morning. Good morning, sir. What can I serve you, sir? Oh, nothing. What I need is advice. You know, for the last four days, I've come within an ace of winning the ship's pool. I see, sir. And I thought, uh, perhaps you could help me guess today's distance. You know, it's the last day. Well, sir, if the wind stays in this quarter, I should hazard a guess. But it's veering a point or two, sir. And if it goes to the north-northeast, there's no telling that it won't be a headwind. In which case, any attempt at prognostication on my part would be utterly useless, sir. That is, uh, if you follow me, sir. Oh, yes, yes. yes. But uh, how many miles do you think we'll make? I've no idea, sir. Oh. Good morning. Good morning, madame. Have you seen Dr. Van Wyck this morning? No, madame. May I serve madame something? You may. Glass of dry sherry, please. Certainly, madame. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Santander. Good morning. Could you tell me the right time? Please? With pleasure. It is now precisely 31 and one half minutes past 11. Is that clock right? That's the correct time, madame. Thank you. A uh, glass of dry sherry, please. Certainly, sir. Good morning. You're early, aren't you? No, you're late. I'm certain you said a quarter to 12. Shall I believe you? It's imperative. All right, <laughs> in that case, I will. Oh, oh. Will you have one of these? I'm sorry, I only smoke sobranis. May I offer you one? Here you are. Steward, 
box of Sopranos, please. Certainly, sir. But these are Sopranos. Allow me. Thank you. Please on my account, will you? Yes, sir. Shall we take our walk? An excellent idea. You seem an observant sort of a fellow. Well, sir, I always endeavor to be receptive to anything that goes on about me, sir. Good. Now, take a careful look at me and exercise your powers of observation. Well? What's wrong? Nothing, sir. Not to my eye. I don't say it's Apollo or anything like that, but it isn't so bad, is it? No, indeed, sir. Well, then how is it that in five days of continuous effort, all I've been able to get from that very decorative young woman is ice. And dry eyes at that. I'm sure I couldn't say, sir. Perhaps it's because she doesn't like me. Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't say that, sir. You see, with some ladies, reserve may be interpreted in a variety of ways. <clears throat> that is, if you follow me, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Or, or do I? You know, by this time tomorrow, we shall have landed. New York will have swallowed us, and the trip will be over. Well, all trips must come to an end. But this one shouldn't, at least not so soon. We must know each other better. Haven't five days at sea told the clever Dr. Van Wyck all he wants to know? It's told me a great deal, but practically nothing about you, except that you're a lovely woman, a charming companion. That's all. Would the rest be important? To me? Oh, yes. All right. I'll tell you. First, I was born. Second, married. Third, divorced. And in due course, I'll die. You know, you're bitter and you mustn't be. Won't you let me be a part of what's to come? Oh, good evening. Aren't you coming down to hear the result of the last pool? Thank you, no. You know, I'm afraid I was entirely too happy. I brought down the wrath of the gods. <laughs> well, that's a perfect description of that young man. In a way, though, I'm rather grateful to him. Why? There's nothing like a common enemy to draw people nearer to each other. Radiogram for you, sir. Oh, thank you. It's marked very urgent. Oh. Will you excuse me? Have you seen my secretary lately? Not since dinner, sir. Can I try and find him for you, sir? No, don't bother. He's probably in his cabin. I'll see him there. Very well, thanks. This is annoying to the point of tragedy. It's an urgent cable from my brokers in code. How interesting. I must go down and decode it with my secretary. It'll probably take about 15 minutes. Where shall I find you then? You may not find me at all. But I might be here, smoking and looking at the sea. I'll hurry back. Then we might possibly have a little supper in my cabin. Hmm? Possibly. Right.
What's Judd? Yes, sir. Have you seen my secretary? He's on deck, I believe, sir, taking a stroll. Oh. Well, let me into his cabin, will you? And then see if you can find him. Tell him I'm waiting for him. Certainly, sir. Where have you been? I? You told me I wasn't wanted. Never mind that now. I want the key to code two. And in future, I'll keep it. Is it for Bergstrom? Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. And what may I have the pleasure of serving you, sir? Brandy. And the pleasure will be mine. Yes, sir. I trust so, sir. Thanks. Put her on my bail. Certainly, sir. How is the bail, by the way? Going along very nicely, sir. Thank you. Uh, let me have a look at it, will you? Certainly, sir. I trust the account is quite satisfactory, sir? Your English is a bit faulty, isn't it? The words account and satisfactory can't possibly go together. No, sir. Uh, you want me to pay it now? At your convenience, sir. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sign it. Thank you very much indeed, sir. There you are. Thank you, sir. Oh. What a silly thing to do, and so undignified. Oh! Yeah, oh. yeah, this one, too. Drink some of this and you'll be better still. No, thanks. Come on now, drink it. No, thanks. I'm all right, really. I'm sorry, but I don't like brandy. 
Oh, but this is very good brandy. Have some. <laughs> now, let's have a look at the foot. Oh, please don't bother. If you'd be good enough to help me across the gangway to my cabin. No I'll... insubordination from patients, please. Now, let's see the foot. Oh! I'm awfully sorry, but we'll have to find out what's wrong with it. I can't believe it. Bergstrom must be mad. Bergstrom makes no mistakes. Well, it seemed hardly possible. That fool can't be Perez. Come on. Where? My cabin. We'll make sure. Right. Where's the portfolio? Here. Why did you put it there? Well, I thought to... Open it. You fool. I only thought... Go and find out where Santana's cabin is. Be quick. What I understand is why it hasn't swollen. Well, probably it's a tendon. Oh. Well, whatever it is, you've been awfully good to it. Now I really must go. Will you help me? Oh, no. This is an occasion which definitely calls for a celebration. We should drink uh, to your tendon. <laughs> Not in brandy. But I have whiskey, too. <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> I was only testing you. Obviously, the situation calls for champagne. Have you really? No, but I will have in a couple of minutes. Wait a minute. Hasn't it struck you that I might not like every steward on the ship to know I'm in here? All right. I'll go and get it myself. Good. What do you think of that? <laughs> yeah, try not to miss me. Oh, I won't. I'll, um, I'll have some music. Why? Oh, I'm awfully sorry, but I, I broke the string this morning. Oh, what a pity. Now, as for the wine, madame, May I suggest Roger 23? An excellent suggestion. Uh, thank you, madame. Lieutenant's cabin is number 14, this deck. Right. Well, here we are. My, how quick. A mere bagatelle. <laughs> That's what I call service. We pride ourselves on our service. <laughs> Roger 23. And properly chilled. Just the right temperature. Exactly what the doctor ordered. <laughs> Good. Here you are. You. To the tendon. May it never slip. Now I must go. Do you really mean it? Absolutely. Very well, then. Oh, my stocking and shoe. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Thanks. This is very chivalrous of you. Not at all. That was very neatly done. Thank you. Another bagatelle. <laughs> well, um, good night. That's an awfully unpleasant expression, don't you think? It's a very necessary one. Necessary? Absolutely indispensable. Very well.
Good evening. Well, well. A friend of yours? My secretary. Oh, I see. Is he looking for something? Won't you ask me to sit down? By all means. Thank you. Won't you uh, have a drink? You're very kind, but this is purely a business visit, Senor Perez. Oh, I understand now. You've made a mistake. My name is Santanda. I think not. Oh, but it's on my passport. Please. Dimitri, what are you looking at? Phonograph. Well, keep on looking. The gentleman doesn't like it. There's nothing here. Are you certain? Absolutely. If I knew what you were looking for, I might be able to help you. Merely some property of mine? Of yours? There's nothing in this room. Could I trouble you to stand and raise your hands high? It's not here. Well, in that case, Signor Perez, I can only apologize for this intrusion. Oh, not at all, not at all. And the name is Santanda. Your passport. Oh, won't you take anything before you go? Thank you, no. Some other time, perhaps. Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Van White would like this sent immediately. It's very important. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming in, Mrs. Allen, Mr. Allen. We'll make delivery in the morning. Good day. Mr. Bergstrom? Mr. Bergstrom is in his office, at the end of the gallery. Radiogram for Mr. Bergstrom. All right. Oh, Mr. Bergstrom? Yes. Radiogram for you. This has just arrived from Van Mike. Ah, code two. Our warning must have been too late. Hmm. Those are your orders. Right. Well, there you are. I've been looking for you all over the ship. How nice of you. We'll be landing in a few minutes now. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, um, shall we say au revoir? Not yet. You told me you were not being met. And my car will be waiting. You must let me take you to your destination. Oh, I wouldn't dream of imposing on you. I insist on saving you the unpleasant experience of a New York taxi ride. It's 
really all Flynn nice off you, but... You know, I in think... a few minutes, I'm going to think you're trying to get rid of me. Oh, right. huh? I surrender, gratefully. That's better. Come on. Here you are. You're the only two people aboard I haven't said goodbye to. Goodbye, Mr. Santander. I'd like to say au revoir, but uh, unfortunately, I'm only going to be in New York a few hours. Oh, really? Don't you think we'd better look after our baggage? Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Mm. Good evening, Mr. Santander. Oh, good evening. You forgot your bar bills. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> There you are. I think that will cover everything. Keep the change. Oh, thank you very much indeed, sir. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. I must run along now. Will you lunch with me tomorrow? Well, I'm not sure. I have a great deal to do. I'll call you in the morning. Well, not too early, then. I assure you it won't be before noon. <laughs> All right. Well, good night. And thank you again for your kindness. Good night. I'm going to see Bergstrom, and I think Mr. Perris. You stay here until I send a man to relieve you. If she comes out, follow her. If she doesn't, you stay where you are. And do you still think she might have something to do with Perez? Well, not necessarily, but I'm a careful person. Good evening. What are you doing here? I was hoping to see you. Now, well, I'm seeing you. How did you get in? Unfortunately, uh, circumstances forced me to use a window. Uh, your bedroom window. Have you gone out of your mind? No, I don't think so. That's the only explanation that could possibly excuse your behavior. I wouldn't do that. You see, all I want is some property of mine. Now I know you're insane. I suppose I'd better humor you. That's better. It's very cozy here. Suppose you explain yourself. Certainly. On the boat, you stole something from me. I want it back. Presuming for a moment that your ridiculous suggestion were true, what would you do if I refused to give you back your property? I'd take it. If you could find it. <laughs> Naturally. You realize, of course, that what you stole from me is worthless without the other half. And I have the other half. Really? How interesting. <laughs> yes, isn't it? What are you going to do about it? I'm going to make you a proposal of partnership. Partnership? Yes, make a firm of it. River and Santander, unlimited. Experts in espionage. Slogan, you want the best documents? We have them. Cable address, subterfuge, New York. But why should you want me for a partner? Because I think you're entitled to a partnership. If it hadn't been for you, I would have never gotten that document off the ship. I see. Well, what is it going to be, partners or... Uh... Partners. That's right. No, business only. Do you mistrust me? Definitely. As a man or uh, as a business associate? Both. I see. One hundred percent. I was at the gangway myself. If he got ashore, I don't know how he did it. My men were watching every exit of the ship. It's no use trying to excuse yourself. Perry's got ashore. 
and your men failed to find him. Perhaps that is Schultz. Any news? Yes. Webster has found Sarah's apartment. This is the name of Santander. He hasn't been there yet, but I left two men to wait for him. Hmm. Excellent. It gave me an opportunity to see the world and satisfy my taste for luxury. I found it more exciting than big game hunting and twice as profitable. And that's the story of my vivid and checkered career. <laughs> now, may I have another drink of the firm? No, I don't think so. It's nearly one o'clock. You must go. As a matter of fact, I'm not leaving tonight. I'm afraid your interpretation of the word partnership isn't quite the same as mine. I wouldn't say that. You see, this apartment's being watched by Van Wyck's man. That's why I came in through the window. But why should Van Wyck watch me? Because you were near him when the letter was stolen. And he's taking no chances. Oh, I see. Have you seen leaving my apartment? Exactly. And I have no desire for an early death, either for you or myself. Were you seen coming in? I'm sure I wasn't. But for the sake of the firm, I'm not going to risk going out. Are you telling me the truth? Do you mean that you actually think I'd tell you a lie in order to stay here? Wouldn't you? Yes, I would. But this time, it wasn't necessary. All right. Take the sofa. You'll find some blankets in the hall cupboard. Good night. Oh, that unpleasant expression again. You always seem to be using it. I find it very useful. Good night. Uh, wait a minute. I know you'll sleep better if you have something to read. Only 50% untrustworthy. I was watching you while you hit it. Thank you. Good. Don't say it. Good night. Oh, excuse me. Have you a match? Sir. Apartment 320. Thank you. Welcome. Want. Did you say come in? No. What do you want? Is it all right to use the blankets with the blue border? Perfectly. Anything I can do for you? No, thanks. Good night. Well, what do you want now? Nothing. Just good night. Madame has slept well. I hope Madame finds the service satisfactory. Well, it's, uh, it's really awfully nice of you, but I, I don't think I'm quite ready for breakfast yet. Oh, how foolish of me. Madame has excused me. Madame? 
Yes? Uh, the gentleman, madame. What are you talking about? Uh, the gentleman who's staying here, madame. Uh, Mr. Santanda. What does he want now? He asked me to ask you, madame, if he could breakfast with you. Tell the gentleman I'd be delighted to see him. Uh, thank you, madame. Come in. Good morning. Good morning. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Well, well. They give pretty good service here, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're really an awfully nice person. Am I? Mm-hmm. You mean because I... Well, because I didn't know you? Yes. As a matter of fact, I can't understand it myself. Unless it's because you're... Well, won't you have some coffee? <clears throat> Thank you. Sugar? Thank you. How many, please? One, thanks. Would you like me to make a remark about the weather? I know a lot. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I would like to talk business. At breakfast? Mm. About the other half of the document. Oh, first we've got to get it. Where from? Friend of mine. You know him. I do? Yes, you met him on the boat. The bartender. Do you mean to say the mm -hmm. man? He's been with me for four years. I'll be ready to leave in half an hour. Isn't there something you've forgotten? Van Wyck's men. Exactly. You mustn't forget the moment we're associated. You're in great danger. And you? <laughs> well, I'm in danger anyway. But we don't want the firm to be in trouble. Now, there's just one way we can get out. Me, officer. What can I do for you, lady? There's a man following me. Just show me the fella. Well, I wouldn't like to make any charges, but I don't want to be bothered. Oh, that's all right. I'll take care of him. Where is he? Just over there, lighting a cigarette. Okay, lady. Hey, you. What's the matter, officer? Follow the ladies, would you? On your way. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I said on your way. Right. Not that way, this way. Get going. All right? It worked beautifully. 138 Columbia Heights, Brooklyn. Yes? Hello, I'd like to speak to Mr. Stanton. Bergstrom here. Stanton is out. Who is this? Brown here. I've got a report that the lady's given me the slip. So you can't even trail a woman? Well, I couldn't help it. She evaded me in traffic. You report to Mr. Stanton this afternoon. Wait here. Uh, Jim lives on the top floor. I hope you don't mind the stairs. Well, that depends what they lead me to. I should be interested to meet Mr. Jameson. You won't find him like a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
Perhaps he isn't in. Maybe. But I told him I was coming today. Is he? Yes. Ben White's man. Oh, how awful. Yes, it's pretty bad. Can't we get out of here? In a minute. But before we do, I want you to give me that document. Why? Because it's not a safe thing for you to carry. You saw what happened to him. I'm not going to have you in danger. Don't you trust me? Of course I do. But how do you know they found the other half? You saw what they did to the bedroom. The fact that they didn't disturb anything in this room proves that they found it. Police headquarters, please. What are you doing? He was my friend. He has to be looked after. Hello, police headquarters? Yeah. I want to suggest that you send a man to investigate apartment 3, 138 Columbia Heights, Brooklyn. Who is this, officer? Apartment 3, 138 Columbia Heights, Brooklyn. Who? Come on, let's get out of here, quick. At least we've got this much of the document. And although it's useless to us without the other half, our friend Mr. Perris finds himself in our identical position. Now then, it's up to you to find Perris. Doesn't the woman come into this? I don't know yet. But we do know she's in the game somewhere. Look at the clever way she evaded my men prove that. I'm going to my apartment. You telephone me if there are any developments. Have Mr. Bergstrom send my receipt to the hotel. Certainly, Mrs. Weston. Don't forget, Bergstrom. I want the price on that jade tomorrow morning. Right. What do you do, Doctor? Good right. to see you again. Thank you. How's the family? Fine, thanks. Good. Any news? We have half the document. Half? Yes. Put it in the safe. I'll answer that. Hello? What is it? An astonishing piece of news. Stanton has telephoned that one of his men saw Perez and the woman coming out of Jepson's house this morning. I see. So they are partners. Oh, she was very clever, but not clever enough. Well, what shall we do? I'll think about it. I'll call you later. Yeah. Madame Rivera. This is indeed a surprise. I hope you'll forgive this unceremonious visit. Forgive, my dear lady, I'm delighted. Could we um, possibly talk in private? Of course. We'll go out onto my terrace. We'll be undisturbed there. You must look at my view. I maintain it's the best in New York. Yes, it's very beautiful, isn't it? 
Very frightening, though. You know, I've no head for height. I'm so sorry. Turn this way. Then you'll feel perfectly safe. Thank you. Well, now, um, shall I get down to business? By all means. When you went on board the Columbia, you had in your possession a document of great importance, stolen from the French government. This is very interesting. On the ship, someone stole it from you. Who told you all this? That's not very important. What is important is that I have half the document. Indeed. May I ask how it got into your possession? Certainly. I stole it from the man who stole it from you. I see. And what do you intend to do with it? Sell me your half? Oh, no, no. On the contrary. I represent a group of persons who are willing to pay any sum up to 700,000 for the complete document. You know, I was on the verge of thinking that you and Senor Perez were partners. <laughs> well, how ridiculous. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> because if you and Perez were partners, your arrival here today would have uh, made your elimination so easy. Well, um, aren't we rather wasting time, especially as I have nothing whatever to do with Perez? Then how is it that you were seen with him today, coming from the house of his confederate? Why shouldn't I be? And you still insist that you are not associated with him? Can't you realize that I'm just doing a job, which is to get that document? I don't care how, where, or from whom I get it, as long as I get it. Now, I stole half from Perez, but I couldn't get the other half. So naturally, I approached him. He said he'd sell it me, and we went to get it. When we arrived, we found what I imagined to be some of your work, but no document. So I finish with him and come to you. I mean, it's all perfectly ordinary common sense. Isn't it? Who are these people who are paying you? Now, would you like one of your agents to give your name? No. Let's go inside. Before I can make you an offer, I must see the other half of the document. My dear young lady, I don't keep high explosives in my apartment. If you really want to see it now, I'm afraid you'll have to wait about half an hour. With pleasure. Right. Dimitri! I want you to go out and get that uh, paper we obtained today. Try and be back in half an hour. Very well. Now, now perhaps we can forget business for 30 minutes. All right, then it's understood. We meet tomorrow at an agreed place, and in return for $550,000 in cash, I give you my half of the document. And a receipt for $600,000. Of course. Now then, can we forget business for a little while? Will you excuse me? Thank you. Hello? Who is it? Oh, yes, Benson. Well, no, of course, I haven't forgotten. Eight o'clock. Yes, yes, I'll be there. Goodbye. You know, I really am an art collector, too, although I do occasionally dabble in uh, other things. Here I have to go to a very dull dinner tonight, and I'd much prefer to be with you. Now, here's Dimitri. Thank you. You may look at it as long as you like. Thank you. Not at all. Get this back as quickly as you can. Well, I must go now. So soon? Yes, it's on your behalf, you know. Allow me. Thank you. You'll have to wait a few moments. Why? The only way out is by my private elevator. And Dimitri's on his way down. Theater. Oh. What are you 
just like that for? Precaution. An easy entry to anywhere. But tell me, how did it work out? It's all as well as we expected. Didn't he believe you? Yes, he believed me, all right, and I saw the other half. But he doesn't keep it in the apartment. It's somewhere outside. All I know about this is that it takes his men, Dimitri, half an hour to get there and back. That was a bluff. He keeps that thing up there in that penthouse. How could you know anything about it? Because all the time you were up there, I was watching the street entrance. Dimitri never came out. You were watching? What for? Well, because after we decided that you should go there, I, I got cold feet. I didn't like the idea of you being... Well, never mind that. Now we know what the thing is. All I've got to do is find the right time to go and get it. He's going out to dinner tonight. Are you sure? I heard him telephoning. I'm certain it wasn't a trick. Good. Let's see, it's uh, 6 o'clock now. I'll go and get my things and I'll be at his place at a quarter to nine. That's it. All you've got to do is sit here and wait for me. But I'm going with you. No, no, you're not. I must. Are you still not trusting me? You know it isn't that. You don't understand. It's not that I think that you couldn't help me. Why is it then? Well, because it's too dangerous. Aren't we still partners? Of course we are. Well, then we must share the danger. No, we shouldn't because... Well, if you must know, because I found out this afternoon that you meant more to me than anything in the world. That sounds silly, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. You mean that you... Please don't let's talk about it now. Oh, I see. But you don't. You've been honest with me, Juan. More honest than I had any right to expect. For that, I admire you a great deal. But there are things you... you don't know about me. Things I can't explain now. But I... I haven't asked you to. Then let me go with you. You must. Ben Wyke's man's there and you can't get in without giving an alarm, but he'll admit me. Who is it? Madame Robert. Has Dr. Van Wyke returned? No, madame. I'll come in and wait, then. Certainly, madame. I hope he isn't going to be long. But, Madame, Dr. Van Wyck is... Uh, oh. there, Dimitri went out this door. And you were in there all the time he was gone? Yes. Let's take a look in the hall. That's the only other door on this floor. Probably it's the side entrance to the apartment. He must have gone through there. Bedroom, pretty unlikely. Let's try this here. Stay here and watch the hall. Right. Here it is. Can you open it? Very easy. What time is it? Three minutes to ten. We've got to hurry. Can you use a gun? Yes, a little. Good. Take this. Stand over there by the door. Put the lights out so they can't see you from the hall. If you hear anyone coming, you know what to do.
But my dear Van Wyck, you must be wrong. There was no jade worked in that era. I assure you that there was. But what's your authority for such a revolutionary statement? My authority is contained in Froebel's monograph of 15 years ago. Oh, you must have been misled. I'm going to confound you with the actual quotation. Excuse me. Where are you going? I'm going to your hall to telephone. You're wasting your time, <laughs> isn't it? Huh? I don't know. He has a disagreeable habit of being right. Steady there, it's hot. Let it ring. If you take it over, they'll know someone's here. We'll be away in a couple of minutes. Hello? Ben Wang speaking. Is that Stanton? Yes. What's wrong? I can't get any answer to my phone. That's not like Dimitri. Better get Schultz. Go to my apartment at once. I'll meet you there. Right. That looks like it. That's it, all right. I wonder. Could it be a copy? Let me see. Wait a minute. Have you the other half with you? Yes, a man without a home is only one safe. Yeah. Compare them. See. Go back inside the door and close them. If you don't, I'll... Give me that document. And I ought to kill you. But being a sentimental fool, I won't. If you give me that document... Wait. Please listen. Why should I listen to you? Please listen. In my apartment, I told you I had something to explain. What has that got to do with it? This. I'm not what you think I am. I've lied to you, to Van Wyck, to everyone. You want this for the same reason Van Wyck does for money. I want it because he's going to give a man back his freedom. I'm Jacques Benoit's wife. There's Van Wyck's car. You've got to believe me. Strangely enough, I do. I... Don't say it. Somebody must have turned off the switch. Ben White. Here, quick. You stay here. I'll draw them off. After they've gone, you get in the elevator and go. But you... Don't worry, I'll be all right. Oh, I can't leave you here alone. Van Wyck will have his men with him, and there's no other way out for you. I can take care of myself, but not you as well. He'll only be in the way. But I... You do as I tell you.
Captain Benoit, in restoring your former military rank and privileges, France is happy to add a token of compensation for the miscarriage of justice you have suffered. In the name of the President of the Republic, the people of France, and by virtue of the authority vested in me, I knight you a member of the Legion of Honor. <laughs>